our acoustic deterrent system is a series of 16 speakers. It's built into a weldment that was designed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Rock Island District with help of um, the USGS uh, contractor. And it will be recessed in the last discharge lateral approach of Lock and Dam 19. And it will emit signals that were developed by Erdic with data that the USGS and Erdic collected uh, in field studies on Asian carp. And the goal is to deter Asian carp from the lock approach as they move in. So they'll hear the signal as they move into the lock approach. And the goal is that, our hope is that they turn around uh, and move back out of the lock approach. The underwater acoustic deterrent system works by projecting sound into the water. We found through research and development a series of sounds that will actually deter and irritate the Asian carp. The sounds themselves are audible by human. They're not dangerous to human hearing though, and they work by irritating certain types of fish within a hearing band. The underwater acoustic deterrent system is developed such that the sounds we're playing are agitating to Asian carp. Now we differentiate that from other species. Asian carps have a hearing profile that is higher than that of other species. What that allows us to do is to take the frequencies that we're putting into the water at different decibels and really hone in on what is agitating to their behavior. It may not be species specific, but it is hearing band or hearing range specific. So it doesn't affect all fish equally. So the construction phase of the study, so the installation is taking about three months. That will be the installation of the speakers and a monitoring system. And then the study is going to run for up to three years. And we'll start getting data on fish movement and behavior um, at the end of this first calendar year. So around November, December of 2021. We'll have more data uh, each year as the study goes on. Lock and Dam 19 is a really nice place to work because the USGS and agencies and universities in the area have a historical data set here of Asian carp moving as well as other native species. So it provides a, a baseline information for us to test against as we're moving forward with the study. That just really makes this a more robust type of project. It adds depth and meaning um, to the data that we get back that we wouldn't have at some of the other locks and dams. One of the other features and reasons for choosing this lock is the complications of the lock themselves. It's not the easiest lock to work with. It, it is hard bottom on all three sides. It has a short approach channel that has a lot of friction and turbulence. That alone makes noises. It's also a very well used lock. So there's a lot of traffic that goes through this area. And that allows us to examine when the fish are moving, if they're being pushed through with the barges, and then how do we asonify and change the sounds we're creating just specific for this lock. So. It presents unique challenges, but it also gives us a baseline to learn and project forward with in the future. So I think this study is important to the public in the U.S. because it will, uh, if successful, so if deterring Asian carp, provide an alternative to the deterrents that are currently available. The electric dispersal barrier in Chicago is not a selective barrier, so it affects all fish um, relatively equally. This would be more selective, so it would affect uh, Asian carp um, and hopefully not affect native species or affect them less than um, an electric deterrent would. Uh, it also would be another tool that we have to deter Asian carp just in general. Uh, so it could have large implications for invasive species management. So one of the unique things that we're doing at this lock and dam is that a part of the monitoring where we can capture the fish movement. Now we do this through using underwater acoustic technology and this is in the ultrasonic range. There are little tags that we put into the fish and we detect them with a series of hydrophones along the bottom of the lock. One of the other unique attributes of the study is that we're monitoring the sounds that are produced, not only by the speaker array system so that we understand how it's functioning, but monitoring the sounds that the lock produces itself. As you can imagine, every time a locked door opens, there's clicking and movement of water and all of those sounds sort of work against what we're trying to do. They're low frequency, they travel a long way, and they're also very loud. It's difficult for us to even project over the sound of what a barge will make. So by having a sound monitoring system at this location, we can learn and change and adapt as the study is going and put that into the study design. Some of the other types of deterrents don't have that type of flexibility just because of how they're developed 
and the toll they take on the actual scientific equipment. So that makes this a little bit more unique than some of the concurrent barrier studies that we have um, running here in the Mississippi River and over in the Great Lakes.